Hello folks, welcome to the Edupedia world and I am Abhinay Gupta. Today again we'll continue with the topic, the appointment and qualification of directors. Right? We have covered most of the topics of the chapter already. Right? There are few basic topics that are left, like we'll be discussing the rotation, non-rotational directors, alternate directors, additional directors, nominee directors, vacation of office and removal of directors. I think these are the only topics that are remaining. Right? So we're, so we'll try and completing it. We'll try to complete it within the next couple of lectures, right? So in the previous lecture, the immediately preceding lecture, we have covered certain important topics like the appointment of the first director, the general provisions for appointment of director, and also the concept that the appointment of director needs to be voted individually, right? So these were the important topics that we have covered in the previous lecture. But the topic that we will be covering in the in the lecture today, right? That is one of the most important topic of the chapter, right? We'll be covering section 152, subsection 6 and 7, which is about the rotational, non-rotational, and retiring directors. You have been asked questions on the same topic couple of times in your examinations, like it's more than six, seven times in the past ten years, right? And this this also uh, is a very important topic because it is not just theoretical, right? You have to understand the concept of calculation of the number of directors, number of rotational, number of non-retiring uh, directors, because you have been asked questions directly on the same. You have been given the number of directors in the company. Please decide how many of them needs to be retired, or who of who among them will be retiring this year. That is the kind of question, direct question that you have been asked in your previous examination and you could accept, expect a similar kind of question in your upcoming examinations too. Right? So pay great detail of, uh, deal of attention on this lecture and try and grab and understand what, what do we mean when we talk about rotational, retiring directors and stuff. Right? So first of all, to begin with the topic, we'll understand who are rotational and non-rotational directors. I will understand the meaning of rotational directors. So basically the term rotational has been given to those directors whose term of office will be determined on the basis of their retirement as per the concept of rotation. Right? So these directors are appointed as rotational directors right? and when their, and when their turn comes, when, uh, when the rotation comes and stop on them, right? That is the time when they are liable to retirement. And then once they are retired, they can be reappointed or someone else can be appointed in their place. Right? Now why is it actually done so that the board is not always concentrated with the same number of people? Right? So if the company wants, if the directors are performing very well, they could continue with that by reappointing the director. But if they do not want, then automatically after the person is being retired, right? You could appoint someone else to be taking their place. So with that, also the directors are not removed. It is not a bad mark on their career also, right? And the company gets refreshing every year. And this concept of rotational directors do not exist within the private companies. So these provisions are only only applicable on the public companies, right? So now let us see the basic calculation behind it. So first of all, we need to understand the total number of directors. PNOD, right? The total number of directors. So the total number of directors in a company would be the number of directors in the board meeting, in the board of the directors of the company, excluding the independent directors and the nominee directors. Nominee directors would be the nominee directors of the government as well as the nominee director of the financial institutions. Right? So these uh, particular kind of directors would not be calculated in the total number of directors. Excluding them, all the directors would be clubbed together, totaled, and then we'll decide the total number of directors. Right? And once you know that how many are the total number of directors in the company, you would know how many of them should be rotational. Because two-third or not less than two-third of the total number of directors in a company should be non-rotational, uh, should be rotational directors. So that is the discretion of the company. They can have a two-third, they can have more than two-third, they can have all of them. Right? Because the article of the company can provide for retirement of all the directors in the annual general meeting. 
right but uh, in the as per the general provision more than two third of the total number of directors are supposed to be rotational directors in an exam point of view if you are given the total number of directors and you need to decide how many of them would be retiring then before retirement you need to calculate the number of rotational directors and for that you will be considering two third only right and you'll give, be giving an assumption that we have considered two third of the number of directors to be rotational so two third of the total number of directors would be rotational directors in the company and the other remaining directors would be considered to be the non rotational directors right so those directors are not liable to retirement as per the tenure or as per the cycle of rotation they will be there in the company so now when we talk about the non rotational directors these directors are also appointed in the general meeting right so they uh, they are generally appointed in the general meeting but the article of association of the company may provide otherwise now by otherwise we mean that they would uh, actually provide for the manner of appointment of the non rotation director but not the number so the number can not exceed 1/3 of the total number of directors because 2/3 has been allocated to the rotation directors right so that 1/3 can be uh, nominated or appointed as per the requirement of the article so even the board of directors may be authorized by the article of association of the company to appoint the non rotational directors right that is one important point to understand right in the examination you may be getting a question referring to this appointment and saying that the directors have appointed the non rotational directors and the article and they were uh, authorized as per the article so is it correct right so you need to know that yeah that can be done because in case of non rotational director the article plays a very important role and when we talk about the period of appointment of non rotational directors like for how long can they be appointed then there is no limit prescribed in the provisions so a non rotational director can also be appointed for life in the company yeah, there is no restriction with that right and the terms of office of non rotational director that may also be determined as per the provisions contained in the article if article specifies something about that again right so that is all about, all about non rotational directors right they are permanent directors in the com in the company they won't retire by rotation right now let us get back to the rotational director so we have seen that two third of the total number of directors would be rotational directors right so would all rotational directors retire at the end or at at the due date in the general meeting the answer is no not all the directors would retire in the annual general meeting all the rotational directors but yeah article may provide for the same that is the company provide that all the directors shall retire at every annual general meeting it has the right to do that right but in general as per the provisions of this act as per section 152 subsection 6 and 7 One third of the total number of, of the rotation director would retire at the end of every annual general meeting. Right. So total number of directors, two thirds should be rotation directors, and one third among those rotation director would retire. So if we consider an example, uh, suppose the total number of directors are fourteen, right? Or we would take a better example. There are sixteen directors in a company. or 20 directors in a company that is the best thing we have 20 directors in a company out of which we have uh, five independent directors or four independent directors and two nominee directors right so they will not be considered in the total number of directors so the total number of directors that we have are now remaining 14 directors right so um, out of them two third have to retire uh, have to be rotational directors as per the provisions of the act so two third of 14 would come up to 10 because we would be rounding it up so always remember when you are dividing the total number of directors into rotational directors the 2/3 if it is a fraction it will always be rounded up right to the nearest whole number right and then if 10 are rotational directors and 14 are non rotational directors then out of those 10 one third would retire by rotation at the end and in the annual general meeting so that would be 3 because over here it is not rounded up it is rounded off so whichever is the closest integer so remember this point while we are calculating when we are calculating the total number of uh, the number of rotational directors we would al always round up the fraction but when we are considering the retirement part 
when we are calculating the number of directors who are supposed to retire that is one third of the rotational director at that time we would consider rounding off to the nearest integer right so i think that was the most suitable example for you, you that is that is clear with you now right so that that, that is all about rotational non rotational and retiring director and remember the article can at any point of time provide for retirement of all the directors right and these retiring directors if you remember they can be reappointed in the same meeting right so now that that is the calculation part now we know ya one third are supposed to retire but how are they supposed to retire so what we have already discussed in the beginning of the lecture is that they would be retiring on the fifo basis so the first directors in 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 our example the first three directors who were appointed into the board would retire in the coming agm right and then the other three and then the other three and that will be the cycle that will continue and they can obviously be reappointed right and then again they go back to the entire circle of rotation and when after all the retire again their turn will start if they are reappointed right so for example suppose at one particular day you had six directors appointed in the board and you have to retire three among them because obviously retiring directors are three in our example but you have six on the first in first out basis so how do you decide which three among them to retire right so that is a question now so in the case of a tie what are we supposed to do so whenever there is a tie first of all what we try is to look for an agreement agreement between the directors so when the directors are being appointed and we know that yeah we are appointing six directors and total number of directors are 14 so at any point of time we would be retiring three directors so let us have an agreement between them as to who would retire first which three among the among them would be retiring first so if they agree among themselves and then they sign an agreement then it is it becomes very simple for you to retire the directors we know okay mr a b and c were the first directors to retire as per the agreement and d e f would be retiring next year right that is very simple but if there is no agreement right at that point of time nobody agreed okay i'll go out first or he'll go out first nothing of that sort was agreed or the company failed to have a hold an agreement then what would the company do so in that case they would draw by lot right they would draw the names in jets as per the lot and that that would be on random basis so in the lot whose ever name comes up they will have to retire and that would be binding on all the directors now that would not be objected why is my name in the list or why isn't his name in the list in the lot that cannot be objected that is always on random basis so whichever of the six whichever first three of the six directors whose name appears in the lot they would retire by rotation right and when they retire the vacancy would be filled up in the same annual general meeting right now let us talk about vacancy also in detail so we know that the vacancy is supposed to be filled up in the same annual general meeting right but what if the vacancy is not filled up if they are not able to fill up the vacancy in the same annual general meeting if it is not filled up in the same annual general meeting the meeting would be adjourned right and that adjournment would be for one week actually so the annual general meeting shall be adjourned to the next week at the same time and same place and if at uh, for an instance if it is a national holiday if that day is a national holiday then it would be adjourned to the next succeeding day which is not a national holiday so if there is a national holiday for two consecutive days or three consecutive days which is a very rare phenomena but if that happens uh, then it would be passed on to the fourth day right that is how the adjourned meeting concept works right and that an adjourned the meeting would be adjourned only if the vacancies are not filled up in the annual general meeting and it is not expressly resolved not to fill the vacancy that means they intend to fill the fill the vacant vacancy but they are not able to fill the vacancy that is the only situation when the meeting would be adjourned right but if they have expressly provided that we won't fill the vacancy we want to reduce the total number of directors then the meeting would not be adjourned and there would be no appointment right and in that joint meeting also again if they are not able to uh, appoint the directors then what 
then if they are not able to appoint directors and they they don't expressly provide that they don't want to appoint the director that means they want to but still they're not ab able to appoint the directors in the adjourned general meeting then the directors who have retired would be deemed to be reappointed into the company but this automatically reappointment automatic reappointment would not be uh, attracted to the retiring directors if there are certain parameters which are fulfilled like where there is a resolution for reappointment of such directors if the resolution was put but the director lost that resolution then they would not be reappointed automatically because that means that the shareholders don't want that person to be reappointed right or if that retiring director has given in writing right if he has expressed his unwillingness to be appointed as director and he has given that in writing he would not be reappointed right that deeming fiction would not attract to that person right and uh, if there is a director who was not qualified right or who is now disqualified so for that person also the automatic reappointment due to the non appointment in the meeting and the joint general meeting would not attract right or if there is a resolution right which is required for appointment like if the appointment of any director requires a resolution to be passed right then the automatic deeming fiction would not be attracted to that director right because uh, that director needs and uh, needs a resolution because that is expressly provided that yeah a resolution is required for appointing the director so for that director automatic reappointment would never attract or if in any case the resolution has been passed for appointment but that resolution was in contravention of section 162 which was that only individual would be appointed in the resolution i mean only an individual resolution would be passed for appointment of a single director right each director would have a specific resolution a separate resolution if that is contravened like if there are two directors appointed by one single resolution then the uh, then in that case the deeming fiction would not attract right right so that is all about this section and we know that it does not apply on the private company it is only specifically uh, mentioned and the provision is specifically provided for the public companies right and over here whenever we are talking about retirement that retirement is by rotation right so that uh, we are talking about the direct retiring directors are director retiring by rotation always right and we have seen that in the total number of directors we we do not include the individual uh, the independent directors and the nominee directors that means that additional director and all would always be included in calculating the total number of directors right so that is all about this section section 152 sub section 6 and 7 so if we uh, give a quick revision before closing the lecture then we have the total number of directors excluding independent and nominee directors right then more, no, more than 2/3 of the total number of directors would be rotational directors and the rest would be non rotational and the tenure for non rotational director could be for life also right and uh, all the provisions Are pro that are provided in the act would be over uh, written by the article so the article would override the provisions given in the act in case of nominee direct, uh, non rotational directors only right then out of the directors who are rotational the two third directors who are rotational we would uh, retire one third of the director in every annual general meeting and that would be done on the fifo basis right and if the if in if there is a tie when we are retiring the directors on fifo basis then we would look for an agreement that was entered in between the directors and if there is no agreement then we would retire them by draw of lot method and whoever name appears in the lot would have to retire and that would be binding on all the directors right and we also know that an article can expressly provide for retirement of all the director in any annual general meeting so that is the right that the article of association has right and then uh, if there is a now when the directors have retired there is a vacancy that vacancy will be filled up in the same annual general meeting right and if it is not filled up if it could not be filled up and there is no express provision as to uh, un, uh, uh, there is no express provision passed that they don't want to fill up then the meeting would be adjourned next week same day same place right and if there is a national holiday then the next succeeding day when it is not a national holiday right and over there they would again appoint the reappoint the reappoint or appoint a new director and if they are not able to fill up the vacancy even in the adjourned general meeting and they do not expressly provide their 
intention of not filling up the vacancy then the retiring director would be automatically reappointed right and this automatic reappointment would not attract to those directors who have given their unwillingness right or for whom a resolution was put in law or for whom a resolution is specifically needed right or who is disqualified or whose appointment has been done in contravention of section 162 so that was a brief review of the entire lecture today right and we'll be covering the rest very limited remaining topics in this chapter additional alternate nominee directors and the removal of directors i think that are the four basic topics that are that is left and also the data bank of directors right that are the five basic topics that are left we'll be covering them in the subsequent lectures so until then it is abhinav gupta signing